Hi everyone, and welcome back to F-Zero GX Let's Play. Um, so this week, uh, we're on the Sapphire Cup. Some slightly more difficult courses, some slightly more fun courses. Um, so, a bit of both. The first one is a combination of both, as in it's a... Coi... Ah, coise? A coise I enjoy. It's a course I enjoy, but also that's kind of difficult, so... I say kind of difficult, there's one bit in it that always fucks with me. Um, and you'll see what that is shortly. Yeah. It's quite a good one, and I enjoy the big blue levels. They're always fun and kind of just high speed drifty things. Entirely like this one. There's two of them in total Drift Highway, and the later one is Ordeal, which I love as a level. But they're quite opposites, because that one, Ordeal, is a really kind of long endurance level, whereas this is a really sh quite short sprint level, which is why I don't always do brilliantly on it, because my tactic of kind of max speed doesn't really work on this exactly. And this is the kind of level I tend to fuck up more on. And because it's small, they're more, the fuck ups are more kind of pronounced. But yeah, you have to do a kind of drift around that bit, otherwise you just crash into the wall. Ah, spin attack user. Bastard. Now, this bit always screws with me because it's similar to the one on Aeropolis from last episode. That it just goes left then right really quickly, and I just really struggle with that for some reason. Of course, the, I was just singing the music there, and that's just reminding me you will this you'll find this music strange because everyone's used to the classic Big Blue theme. There is a way, and I've done it um, to unlock the old Big Blue music on this, and I have the option of turning it on or off. And at the moment, I have it off, uh, so I have the standard music. Later on, when I show you Big Blue Ordeal, because that's a more fun and longer level, I'll put the proper Big Blue music on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will by then. Everyone who's played it. Or most Nintendo games like Smash Bros. or anything like that should be familiar with the classic Big Blue music. It's pretty iconic. And pretty good too. Yeah, that's how you gotta do that, but better. So, as I say, all in all, I've done alright, like 8th place. I can. Oh! Oh! Spoke too soon! Oh, 20th! Oh, fuck! How did that happen? Well, I don't know what happened. I crashed into a bloody thing. But. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, I was just saying how well I was doing, and then no, I crashed into a pole. 27 points for me. Oh dear, dear, dear. Well, I'll have to recover that on the next couple then. Um, so Port Town Aerodive. Uh, some of you will recognise it from Super Smash Bros. Brawl, where it's one of the levels, and I don't know why of all of them they chose that level, because it's a, it's, 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 a, it's a fun level, but it's not exactly particularly memorable. But, well, I'll see what you think. There's only two, again, like with Big Blue, there's only two Port Town levels, but they're both in this cup. So, get used to it this episode. Haha. <laughs> this one's quite long, but quite good fun. And my high speed tactic does work on this. As in. If I'm good, I won't see anyone for the next rest of the race now. And I know this track pretty well. Ow. Apparently, I'm not good. I'm still ahead. Whee! Which reminds me from one of the old ones from F-Zero X. Uh, I think it was one of the Sector X ones. Where you have a big bit like that, but instead of having a slow drop like this, you have an actual just jump where you just fly this entire distance, basically, and it's great fun. Oop. But one of the things I was thinking the other day is, though, that if you look at F-Zero F -Zero X on the N64, it looks really blocky and, like, ancient now. It's not aged particularly well. Whereas this game, looking at it, still looks visually pretty damn nice. As in, I occasionally have to remind myself that this game is ten years old. <laughs> but you don't, it doesn't at all feel that old. Um, partly because it's insanely difficult gameplay means I've been playing it pretty constantly for the last ten years. And still only just managed to beat all the cups on Master relatively recently. Um, oh, everyone's right behind me. Excellent. Um, but also as well, it's just the fact that it looks so nice as well. And especially, the graphics are especially impressive when you consider how fast you're going for the majority of the game. To be able to render all this stuff that quickly is quite impressive. So, well done Nintendo. Just Now all you need to do is come out with another one, and then I'll be happy. So as you can see, it's a, it's a longer track than some of the others, but that it's a fairly... It's not straight track, um, but it's not a particularly curvy, complexy one, as in... As you can see, I can go the majority of the track without crashing into anything, which is always good. And with the triple Z, that means no one touches me. 
it's like I, I'm boosting more because I feel like I should rather than I actually need to. So already I've got to be what a good five seconds ahead, which is so very rare in F-Zero games. It's lovely. Normally, almost all 30 races will come within milliseconds of each other, so to have a lead in the order of seconds is excellent. So I'm just going to kill myself on the home stretch. Hooray! So that should make up somewhat for the embarrassment of last track. I'm going to say that put me into around third or fourth overall, or something like that. Okay, I was being like the fifth overall. Um, but they're all fairly close. Green Panther's the only one who's really quite far ahead. Might try and kill him in the next race if I get a chance. He'll be marked as my rival, so... Ah! Mobius Ring! Uh, Mobius are a cool shape, they're the only one-sided shape, because if you look at it... Because there's no clear distinction between the two sides, the two kind of twist over each other, so Mobius actually only has one side. But one side that's on both of its sides. I know, confusing. Um, but you'll see why when I play it. Um, because this is just both sides of a Mobius, but you'll only... You'll notice it never feels like you're switching onto another side, you just kind of slowly spin. So it only feels like one edge. And that's because it is only one edge. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about geometry now and get on with playing. This is a really good fun track as well. Come on. Gotcha. Stay down, motherfucker. Right, so my rival's been assassinated, so hopefully that should help me a lot. The nice thing about this track, because as you can see, because it's pretty, again, not straight, but not complex. Like, you can just go really fast on it. Which is what I'm doing. It's even more fun when you get boost power, but yeah, I just really enjoy this one. Just because there's no tricks in it, no twists, no jumps or anything like that, just speed. Similar to this is this uh, one later on in the AX Cup, Mute City Sonic Oval, that is just an oval, covered in heel strips and boost pads, and it's great fun. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you bastard, get back here. I try and kill him too. Oh, no. Missed my chance. As I say, as in the last episode, and I'm stick with it, kill the killing of rivals is often a pretty good tactic to have. Oh, so my only real issue with this game is they have some serious uh, rubber band AI. <laughs> Mario Kart or something like that, but less obvious than this, but more noticeable, if that makes sense. Because like, in Mario Kart, rubber band AI is basically when the CPs are behind you, they get little boosts to their speed and intelligence and stuff like that, that mean they're more likely to catch you up, which they don't get when, you're, when they're in front of you. Um, so basically, so it means that when you're in front, you're still getting challenged by them more. Whereas in Mario Kart, they use like balances of items, think of like blue shells and bullet bills and chain chomps and stuff like that. That's weighted towards the further back enemies. In this, it's just a speed boost. Um, so it can be quite annoying in some cases, because say, um, an AI is ahead of you and it takes ages for you to just overtake them. And then as soon as you overtake them, they get the speed boost and so can overtake you again. Which kind of pisses me off because it feels like they're cheating. Oh, Red Gazelle's ahead of me still. Oh, but who's right down at the bottom? Where is he now? Green Panther, 10th now. Excellent. So, see, I think I knocked him from 1st to 10th with one smack in the face. A very useful tactic and one I would recommend heartily, especially on the more difficult courses. Because that's the advantage of the later courses. Although they're more difficult because of that, they're more easy to kill someone on. Yes, yeah, so this is Port Town Long Pipe. There's a couple of pipe based levels in this. Actually, the third Port Town one. Cylinder Wave is also hype based, um, but on the other two, so it's, it's like Cylinder Wave and Firefield uh, Cylinder Knot, you're on the outside of a tube, whereas on this one you're on the inside of a tube. So the trick with this level mostly is just knowing where the boost pads are. Um, so I will show you, there's one here, there's one here, and we flick over to the other side, and I missed it, there's one there, one here. Another one there, another one there, which I just missed, and look, the other side down. Okay, so maybe I don't know where all the boost pads are. There's definitely one to my right here, or left. I get confused. Yeah, it's right. When you're talking about the inside of a tube, right and left, quickly, you lose grip on what to, what, what's to what side of you. But there's one to the right, yes, here, and then on the bottom here, there's another one, which I missed, but I knew it was there, that's what counts. Then we flip over again. Then on the bottom side here, there's one. 
and we just have to be able to dodge this thing at the end, because that's really annoying when it hits you in the face. And that's it! That is still the wave. One of the nice things is, apart from that bit at the end, um, there are very few bits where you can actually get hit and lose health. So, if you're if you're kind of struggling with this... Oh, this side's, yeah, now I've got it. Oh no. Or not. Uh, if you're kind of struggling with the AI, you can boost pretty freely on this level, just because apart from these huge, great spinning things here, there's not a chance of you hitting into much. So it doesn't matter about... So your health's pretty much only used for boosting. But even so, there's no boost patch, you don't need to bother with boost anyway. I can see off from the map, I'm pretty far ahead of them at the moment, and I haven't exactly been boosting much, I've just been hitting the pads at the right time. And that's the key with this level, like I said. And, oh, and not hitting these big metal bars at the end, that's also kind of crucial. And I know it's going to happen to me on one of these labs, it's going to be embarrassing again. Because I can guarantee, if I think, if I talk about it and say, oh, better not do something stupid and make a tit out of myself, I will. Almost guaranteed. Based on my last episode and some... Ooh, seven seconds ahead. That is glorious. Da -da -da. Do -do 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 -do. I don't know what I'm singing or why. Anyway, back to the game. Um, I'm going to stop boosting because I'm kind of low on health. And much as I said, yeah, you're not going to hit anything. Don't want to tempt fate. I died last episode and that was really embarrassing. My pride is still recovering from that. So, oh, that was nauseating. Out for the bars. Oh, ooh, that was close. That was very close. Oh, I told you that would happen. Oh, fortunately, I'm miles ahead, so it doesn't actually matter. Only my pride is damaged. So by now, I should have recovered from my fuck up on the first level. I definitely came first in this. But oh, ten seconds. That's good. Um. So yeah. I'm ahead, but not as ahead as I'd like to be. And the next level is the one I hate. This is Mute City Serial Killer. It's actually Serial Gaps, but I, yeah, you'll see why I call it Serial Killer. Um, I put the special music on, though. Like I said, there's the, there's the way to unlock uh, the special Big Blue music. There's also the way to unlock the special Mute City music, which I've also done. Which is more like the classic Mew City music. Also, you'll note for once, and it's the only time you'll see me not going for fully max speed, is because I know I'm going to crash so much that I know I can't even sustain my full max speed, so it's not quite worth it. Because um, I hate this level, and I've never been able to come higher than about 20th in it, so... Who knows? Maybe I'll pull it off while, while you're watching. Who knows? That could happen. I'm not holding my breath, though, and neither should you. Hell, I'll be impressed if I can just complete the track. To be honest, that's all I really need to do. Oh, explosion! It's kind of like, as well, there's level in the story mode that's similar to this. There's a set in Mute City as well, and I hate that too. And I did not mean to take that- Oh, yep, yep, I'm dead. That happened. That's incredibly irritating. Let's try again. The other thing with this level, it's just so easy to just die like that. And on Master, if that happens once, that's it, you're done. I should win out yet one life, but it basically means like, you don't get a lot of second tries. Specifically, one second try, and that's it. And on levels like this, where it's really easy to fuck up. Fuck up? Yeah. yeah, this is preparing you, though, for the later cups, the Emerald and the Diamond Cup, which have a lot more potential for death in them. As in, you get to the point where edges on the track, like this, like barriers here, are a luxury. And most of the later levels don't have them. Some entirely don't. Um, yeah, I can think of a couple of ones in the Diamond Cup where there are no edges on the entire track. And it's, it's heinous. That's what it is, and I'm going way too fast here. This is not good. Let's have a little shortcut here. Kind of. Ow. So you can see why my max speed tactic just wouldn't have worked in this- Ah! Every time! I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but... If someone could tell me what I'm doing wrong, well, it'd be excellent, because always all the computer players make it onto the top layer there, and I never can. So either I'm a I think I might be angling myself wrong in the air, but... Ooh, I might not actually win this cup all in all. I should at least beat it, as in, like, successfully complete the level, but beyond there, I'm not sure, because I haven't been reliably above about... 20 something here. As I say, I always seem to come 20. It's very specific. I always come 24th every time I've beaten this so far. 
So, oh no, still meant missed it. Really annoying. Every fucking time. Oh my god, am I going to beat 24th? I am. Oh my god. 11th. You know what? I'm okay with 11th. That was pretty fucking good for me. As, as I say, the last three or four times I've done it, all the practices I did for this Let's Play, I came 24th. So, I might have still won overall. Ha! Would you look at that? By a non and bad margin as well, the Garnet Goose is still victorious. Yay! I'm pleased with that. I'm very pleased with that. And I didn't die at all. Oh no, I did die. I died once, but it was very briefly. Unlike last time where I died at the end of the last lap. So blah 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 blah, I'm good. And as it's saying thanks for playing for me, I'm saying thank you for watching to you. I have been the Doctor with the Infamous Gentleman, this has been F0GX, and I'll see you next week for the Emerald Cup. Thanks for watching.